first it was the trigger issue with the safety. I took that off. Right. Now, three times today, I've had to take the nose off of that right there because of jamming up staples. This gun right there has been nothing but problematic since I've had it. I don't care what brand it is. That little yellow boss stitch over there outperforms it 10 to one. That gets used a whole lot more side by side and this gun fails every hour or so. This gun is garbage. Go. Right there, that little silver spot right there at the end of this shaft is a jam staple that's not allowing this to slide back up in there like it should. This makes, what, five times? Mm -hmm. or four, five, five times? Five times. Look, that much wood. Slide back, you can see the, uh, in there. See the staple right there? Right there. Look at the name of that. Oh, here, I got you. Garbage, garbage. All right. You didn't catch that. I want to point out something. What I did right there. Uh, if you notice how I put that board in, I want to. I'll show you real quick. It sure makes it a lot easier as far as keeping your butt joints good. Get that in the groove first. Notice this, see my end up there, it's already good. So I got my butt joint, I slide it down, that way it's already good, and then I slide this together. And when I start tapping it in, I start this end, and come down this way. That way, if I'm going away from it, it's gonna vibrate that board apart. But since I put this in together first, tapped it this way, it's gonna pull that board that way just a little bit, if it happens to come out. Just a little pro tip. What are you sporting there, Chief? The zero Gatorade. <coughs> Gentleman's got a prosthetic leg, so we run those two pieces of wood with no, two different types of wood with no transitions. That way it would be smooth for the wheelchair. We didn't even use transitions, wood transitions. To the tile we used the flat metal so it would be very low profile
got a house of laminate to install and what I was thinking about on my mind here uh, I'm gonna start on this long wall right here and run straight into the front door start on this whole long wall all of this will go forward around into the kitchen and laundry room there and then everything to the left of that the master bedroom closet or the bathroom gets a different LVT. This is all laminate. But anyway, all of this. So this is that wall. Anything this direction over here, I had to work backwards. Uh, this little hallway, little bedroom, and little bedroom. We just brought the laminate in this morning. So we Got the floors all ready to go, scraped, and they still look rough, but they are scraped. Nail heads beat down, sheetrock scraped up. The seams are edged, so in the morning we can just get straight started on it. And this is here. You get a better view like that. Once again. Starting on this wall, work forwards here. All of this, these three rooms and hallway over here will have to be worked backwards that direction. Well, would you looky here, what was waiting on me? These pro knees are so comfortable. I have a problem with rocking myself to sleep when I work. So we're working on this laminate job and these cabinets are, I've been wondering what was gonna happen here how the wood was gonna fall up against these cabinets and what makes these unfriendly for laminate is they go back there, which is okay, but then at the same time, they go back that way. So see that? So I gotta get my laminate past this and back behind there as well. So it's just like that on both sides. So luckily, my runs of laminate fell about centered there. Had it fell back in there, I just would have had to run my board straight off in there because there would have been no way of getting this fanned out like that and in there. So because it did fall like that, I got two pieces because you couldn't get one piece in there, tipping it up either way. I'm just going to stick them in there and put them together and then, let me see if I can do this here. Get these seams all lined up right here just nicely. Now that I got it in there, I want to kind of bend it backwards just a little bit to make sure it locks together good. Okay. Now, hopefully, that will lock in there real good along with these other rows. I'm going to take my pry bar, pull them in. There we go. Just beautiful, just like that. Okay, hold on. Check this out. Bam. Rocker double XL. This thing is absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome. Hardwood and laminate, it has proved to be super awesome on laminate. This is definitely the best $50 a person could spend when it comes to hardwood or laminate. I'm assuming vinyl plank too because the area, the way you have to lean this wood up to get it locked in, look here. This is thick enough just to be awesome. I can't say enough about this. You guys need to get one of these. If you do hardwood or laminate or vinyl plank, this is awesome. I'm gonna catch you by surprise. Hey Isaac. What's up? What kind of gloves you got on? Gloves. Better tools. You like them? I do. How long you had them? Uh, about six months. And how many other pairs of gloves have you went through and those are still holding out? About half a dozen. Half a dozen gloves? Uh-huh. That's pretty convenient having the fingertips missing on them three really fingers, good. huh? Awesome. Thank you for your Better Tools review. You're welcome. Two guns sure makes it a lot better. And that bad boy right there, I tell you what, that has probably been the biggest time saver Biggest time saving tool I have ever bought. And that is one bad mamma jamma. Biggest time saver 
it's in run with that though. The crane cutter I got definitely speeds up the process of these wood jobs. This wood right here is beautiful. I love this floor right here. My defense of this little gun right here. I don't know why I'm defending it a little bit, but you can plainly see, if you look right there, you can tell that it does get oiled regularly. I oil it every day before I use it, and it is definitely not from the lack of taking care of it. Um, but in defense of this gun, I have figured out a way to make it work without having any issues out of it. And that being said, I use an inch and a quarter net staples rather than one inch staples, which I was using before. I am using one and a quarter inch staples. And since I started using the one and a quarter inch staples, I've not had any issues out of it. It has not got jammed up, not even one time but I'm going to have to double check that on a scrap piece of subfloor and make sure that the staples are not protruding through the bottom of the subfloor because if it is, I'm going to have to back out because I like my staples to uh, end inside the subfloor. I do not want my staples protruding through the bottom layer of the subfloor because they lose strength. So if that been the case, they are going all the way through, then I am going to have to back up and stick to my one inch nails like I was already using, which therefore is gonna cause this gun to be pretty much worthless. But I just wanted to verify that I did figure out a way to make this work, but I did have to use a bigger staple. It's the same gauge, so I'm not sure what the difference is. Um, again, you can see all in there, you can see definitely gets oiled regularly and stuff like that so i don't really know what the deal is with this and i don't know why a longer nail would make it work better but it does so i just wanted to rectify that and uh or explain that because there is a way around it i don't know if i just got a flute gun and it's a lemon or what the deal is but again i've had nothing but trouble out of this gun and um if I did just get a lemon or a flute or a, just a bad one out of the whole run or whatever like that, I won't be spending the money to test it again because this is the only power nail product I've ever bought and it's given me nothing but trouble. But with that being said, it is working fine using the bigger staples. So I just wanted to throw that in there.